Today on Local Connection, we bring you stories of hope and second chances. Join us as we get to know a community too often forgotten. Underneath the halos of a moonlight glow Now with the time of the season where it rains and snow The city's so dense, it's hard to see sunshine Dark alleys of disease, needles and crack pipes This is where the junkie become kids on the playground Pretty as it gets if you wanna get down Can't make the rent, so they crowd in the shelters Deal with refugees, the derelicts, the addicts and elders Can't stop, we won't stop the drugs and rappers Run down from hope, nails, turn into crack houses what you would give to be the people who straight Switch lives all together like the needle exchange So what's your plan to get out of the ghetto? Get clean, hop the first train out of the west coast No matter how it is, you take it slow And hold it down, baby, like an anchor of hope You never know until you are down here and you went through it But you can see the pain, the suffering, the sickness So I tell you, these people are good people that just need help We're not dead yet And nobody's gonna take that away from us they saved my life, because that's how I felt, because if I stayed in the streets in Vancouver, who knows what would have happened to me. Welcome to a special edition of Local Connection from Vancouver's downtown east side. I'm Marnie Maines. And I'm Clayton Timko. Thousands of people call this neighborhood home, and today we're at the Salvation Army's Harbor Light Centre. They're a nonprofit organization that has been helping to rebuild lives for over 60 years. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll learn more about some of the shelters and great services they provide to people at different levels of recovery. But first, reporter Stephanie Weeb introduces us to a few other organizations here that are inspiring change through their focus on education, food bank, and a fresh start in the workplace. East Vancouver was once the shopping district and is now Canada's poorest postal code. For some, there is little hope for change. One day I was talking to a police officer mm -hmm. and uh, I asked him, I said, do you think this will ever be clean and get changed? He goes, no, it will only get worse. Because if one dry leaves, someone will replace it. If a dealer leaves, someone will replace it. The downtown east side of Vancouver is often associated with poverty, substance abuse, and hopelessness. While these problems are still felt, the community has never been stronger and more appreciative of where they came from. With the help of Megaphone Magazine and Hope in Shadows, we get a better look into what the downtown east side is really about. Megaphone Magazine is a magazine sold on the streets of Vancouver by homeless and low-income people. So essentially it is an employment program. It gives people an opportunity to earn an income and it also gives the community a voice by raising awareness about issues in the downtown east side, issues around homelessness and poverty, so the rest of the city can learn about these issues and get a better understanding about what's actually going on on the streets of Vancouver. They get their first 10 copies for free when they sign up. After that, they purchase each copy for 75 cents and they sell each copy for a suggested donation of $2, keeping the profit for whatever they sell it for. For some vendors, it's just you know having a few extra bucks in their pockets. For other vendors, it is their sole means of income and it allows them to live and live with dignity in the city. Some days are slow, some days are fast. You know, I'm out here, rain, shine, hail, snow, and those mailmen are wimps compared to me. Paper? Many of us are familiar with the food bank and its contribution to the downtown east side. In recent years, however, many other organizations have set out to help the troubled community in a unique way. The Greater Vancouver Food Bank feeds over 27,000 people per week. The Union Gospel Mission and the Carnegie Centre are helping people complete their GEDs, teaching them financial skills, as well as resume building. While these groups are getting people ready for the workplace, there are some organizations that are helping people get straight to work. Hope and Shadows um, is a, a community project that is based around a photography contest for downtown Eastside community members. And each year we've distributed approximately 200 single-use film cameras to people in this community. And they've had three days to take photographs showing uh, the strengths of their community. And from the winning photographs and the photographs chosen for the Hope and Shadows exhibition, we've also created an annual calendar which is sold on the streets of Vancouver and Victoria and North Vancouver by uh, people who are impacted by homelessness or are living on very low income. So the calendar has created employment opportunities for people to sell the calendar and have a dignified way of earning an income. Only 
only 40 people's photos will be featured in the calendar. I'm going to win. I'm going to win this year. Again, I won last year. But Oppenheimer Park was still packed for the Hope and Shadows event. Once in a while, and we're lucky that people actually pay for barbecues and stuff. We get free food, free clothes. So, you know, we have a free band today, and, you know, it makes our spirits high. So I think we're great. We're awesome. For Vancouver's downtown east side, community and outreach crossover. Residents volunteer, teach, share, and help, proving that in one of Canada's darkest areas, there is hope in the shadows. For Local Connection, I'm Stephanie Weeb. Thanks, Stephanie. It's great to see second chances at life. And speaking of second chances, AIDS is no longer the death sentence that it was once believed to be. It has become a manageable condition thanks to a treatment that is helping to lower the virus to undetectable levels. Up next, reporter Sonia Gregar introduces us to Heart and how we could one day see an AIDS-free generation. In the early 1990s, Vancouver had some of the highest rates of HIV infection in the world. The situation has dramatically improved since then, thanks to the efforts of Dr. Julio Montaner and the BC Center for Excellence in HIV AIDS, located right here at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver. Established in 1992, the BC Center for Excellence in HIV AIDS Research pioneered what is called highly active antiretroviral therapy or HEART, a three-drug cocktail combined within a single pill that not only improves the health and longevity of HIV patients, but reduces the likelihood of the virus's transmission by more than 90%. Employing HEART in such a manner is called treatment as prevention. Dr. Julio Montaner, the center's director, explains. At the present time, British Columbia is unique in the world in that we have adopted treatment as prevention as our guiding principle. Um, for the last four years, uh, we have embarked on a proactive program of supporting access to treatment. Widespread and accessible HIV testing is the key to successful implementation of treatment as prevention, and there is a new testing method that makes that process easier. Insti Rapid HIV Test Kit was developed here in Richmond and uses a small membrane that reacts to HIV antibodies and gives preliminary results within one minute. The test involves a collection of a small amount of blood from a finger which is first shaken to separate possible antibodies from the blood cells. The bottle is poured into the test membrane, after which a color developer and a clarifying solution are added. Once all the solutions pour through, a single dot forming on top of the membrane means a confirmed negative test, and two dots an unconfirmed positive result, which would be verified with additional blood work. Stop HIV AIDS, or Seek and Treat for Optimal Prevention, is a pilot project created in partnership with BC Provincial Government that allows greater access to testing and care in Prince George and Vancouver's downtown east side, two communities with highest rates of HIV infection in the province. We've been very fortunate in British Columbia that uh, throughout uh, all these years we have had a very productive uh, uh, discussion with our provincial government. So we go out to where people are, we go and meet them, and we support them starting on antiretroviral medications. We try to engage them back into care if they've been living with HIV, but not really have been seeing their physician or nurses. Um, and we try to support them with housing. We were trying to bring people and, and, and testing and treatment together. We have been very successful at that. The rates of testing in the downtown east side uh, and in the north have gone up uh, uh, dramatically over the last couple of years. Uh, and the number of people in treatment uh, is also increasing steadily. So the good news is that we're moving in the right direction. There is a lack of leadership at the federal level when it comes to HIV and related matters. This is about people becoming comfortable with talking about sexual matters, uh, injection drug use, uh, to embrace the public health effort. HIV was a death sentence, a short-term death sentence uh, back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, in 96, it became a chronic manageable disease. Today, with the development of heart and the notion of treatment as prevention, uh, we have transformed all of these, not just into a manageable condition, but actually a condition that we can potentially eliminate. And BC is half the way there, and I'd like to be uh, confident that before my academic career is over, we will deliver on an age-free generation. With China's recent adoption of treatment as prevention as its new national HIV AIDS strategy, the goal of a global AIDS-free generation is one step closer to realization. 
To learn more about treatment as prevention and the other groundbreaking research of the BC Centre for Excellence in HIV AIDS, visit their website. And to find out more about local HIV testing sites in Vancouver, such as the Downtown Community Health Centre behind me, contact Vancouver Coastal Health. This is Sonia Grigar, reporting for Local Connection. Thanks, Sonia. It's amazing how advanced AIDS research has become and how much it will keep evolving. For more information on the BC Centre for Excellence, you can visit the website below. And speaking of excellence, here at the Harbour Light Centre drop-in, they're providing residents of the downtown east side with excellent care and services on a daily basis. After the break, we'll learn more about how this organization is using a holistic approach to healing. Plus, these stories. Voices from the other side. Who cares if I live? Who cares if I die? We talk to survivors of the streets. Once I was in prison at a young age, uh, pretty much got indoctrinated into the drug culture. Supervised injection. We visit a site that is the first of its kind in North America. It's a clean environment. It stops the spread of diseases. It also keeps another person alive. If you OD behind a dumpster, who's going to find you? Local Connection will be right back. Welcome back to a special edition of Local Connection. We're here at the Salvation Army's Anchor of Hope Drop-In Centre in Vancouver's downtown east side. This is just one of the great sites that residents can turn to for help. Another site that is making a big difference in this community is the supervised injection site. Reporter Joanne Lohr takes us to the facility that is saving lives one person at a time. The Vancouver downtown east side is known for its crime, poverty and drug epidemic. Every day addicts are in risk of infectious diseases and overdosing, claiming not only their lives but costing hundreds of thousands of dollars in health care. However, there is a place that is helping reduce the number of HIV transmissions, open drug use and overdosing, from supervised injection to detox. This place is called Insight. Located on East Hastings Street, the facility accommodates 700 to 1,000 visits per day for people wanting to inject heroin, cocaine, and morphine. Insight is a supervised injection facility. It's a place where those people who are addicted to illicit injectable drugs can go and inject their drugs in a place where they're supervised by nurses, uh, and in that way they can be treated if they suffer a drug overdose. It's also a facility that can engage the most marginalized of addicts and drug users and engage them in uh, possible drug treatment in the future and offer them other preventive health initiatives such as immunizations. Insight provides syringes, cookers, filtered water and other harm reduction supplies, materials that are not necessarily available in the streets. Using on the streets, more to the point using in the alleys, is incredibly unhygienic and it's incredibly dangerous. I've talked to people who, before they injected at Insight, would be injecting in the alleys and they'd be drawing water out of puddles sometimes. That is a disaster. People don't have time to properly prep their fix. They don't have time to filter. It's hard to find a vein, especially when you're keeping an eye out for six. Your chances of getting an abscess to skyrocket. And more to the point, 
If you OD behind a dumpster, who's going to find you? Meet Steve, an Insight user for roughly seven years. Out of the 30 years of opiate use, Steve says he owes his life to Insight after overdosing on two occasions. When I come in in the morning, say at 10, it opens up. Uh, you wait, and then you give him your handle. My handle is Steve12. Hi. Uh, Delata. Delata number 12, please. Thank you. And then I, I proceed with what I do. I, I get my, uh, the stuff I used to inject, and, um, and I go to my booth, the assigned booth that the staff gives me, and, and I, I do my, 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 you know, my injection. Drugs are not provided here. You bring your own drugs. Is he doing all right today? Yeah, not bad. Thanks. Yeah. No, thanks a lot. Hey. Um, it's cost me anything. Okay, thanks. And um, and they, you know, and you inject here, and um, it's a clean environment. It stops the spread of diseases, mm -hmm. and um, it also keeps a, another person alive. Like just last week, I think they had six overdoses here, mm -hmm. and those people would not be here if this place was not open. Upstairs from Insight is OnSite, a detox and drug treatment center where an addict has a chance to get clean. When I'm using, I'm what you call like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So right now, the way I am is not how I am when I'm loaded. Taking it pretty slow this time, like uh, I'll be going to treatment, I'm not quite sure where yet. And then most likely uh, like supportive recovery, like a 90 day program. And then, yeah, who knows? This is a low threshold trust building service down here at Insight. And we really work to reach out to the most marginalized people who don't have a lot of trust for healthcare services. So when somebody is using here and they ask about detox, it's great to be able to say, hey, listen, we got a place right upstairs. It's run by the same staff that you trust down here, the same principles, it's low threshold, it's gonna be focused on your well-being. Let's talk about it a bit more. I was in Victoria once and uh, there was no insight, but I found a bag of used syringes. And, um, and I didn't care, I was very dope sick. So I took my chances like Russian roulette and I fixed with a dirty rig. So the, this program is exceptional. Not only that, my self-esteem has risen since I've come here. You know, I don't have to like, feel like such a scumbag. It is an illness, and um, the staff treat you really well and make you feel like a human being. So, like I said, it saved my life and many others. Insight, I'm Joanne Lohr for Local Connection. Thanks, Joanne. Well, back here at the Harbor Light Center, outreach and caseworkers are working with thousands in need through services that focus on food, clothing, medication, and drug rehabilitation. They truly play an integral part in rebuilding the downtown east side. And earlier this week, we caught up with staff to find out what really goes on here. I'm here with the emergency shelters manager, Kevin. Kevin. Pleasure to meet you, Marty. Pleasure's all mine. Uh, tell me about this place. Uh, this is the Beacon Shelter, uh, and it's one of the, uh, the shelters department is one of the many services that Harbor Light offers. Uh, we also have detox, um, treatment stabilization, and uh, CSC uh, for corrections. Um, this particular shelter is, has 60 beds. It's a 24-hour shelter. Uh, clients come in. Uh, they can stay for initially 14 days. If they agree to see a caseworker, uh, they can stay for as long as it takes um, us to help them find housing. We offer three meals a day, plus bag lunches for those, those that are working. Mm -hmm. uh, we do laundry twice a week. And then in addition, we offer learning opportunities. Uh, and that includes a computer program, uh, employment programs, cooking programs, um, and then a, a nurse's clinic, because uh, addressing health is a, a real important issue as well. Harbor Light feeds over 4,000 people a week from all walks of life. Not only do they provide food and shelter, but caseworkers and outreach workers are there to accommodate all sorts of basic human needs. So the outreach worker, um, we're the person that really uh, welcomes them into, into the community and into the environment here at Harbor Light. 
we really do a quick intake assessment with them, kind of figuring out what their needs are, um, where they're coming from, and what kinds of resources they may need in the future. Um, so some of the things that we deal with in that sense are um, ID, getting people uh, IDs. If they have any medical needs, we connect them with the Vancouver Coastal Health nurses that come here. We also uh, can connect them with a mental health team. If also, uh, people come in with needs for, say, treatment or they need to get into detox or stabilization. So we're really the people that can uh, direct them and, and, uh, to those resources. So I'm here with Chris, who works at Harbor Light. He's a caseworker here. So Chris, this is the first step once you're assigned a caseworker. Uh, tell me what your role is from then on. My role is to help get clients housed and to also address any issues that might prevent them from getting housing. So for example, we might be looking at their income and try and get them income assistance or try and facilitate them getting employment. Mm -hmm. uh, we might also perhaps be looking at some addiction issues or mental health issues or whatever underlying issues that have caused them to be homeless in the first place. We talked to some of those people in need and how Harbor Light is helping them facilitate their own healthy transition in life. I've never actually seen uh, places actually work for you. I've heard, I've seen places that sort of helped you, but not to this extent. I came here sort of at the end of my rope, like I didn't have anywhere else really to turn, and people had recommended that I come here. I was very nervous just coming in, even just for the bed. Um, I didn't really know people, I had just been raised, but you come around this area, it's not the best area for a kid, but I got here my first week nervous. People just started talking to me. I talked to some of the counselors, the outreach workers, and they just, they related to me to the point that they're like, we know what you're going through. And I started feeling better about myself, not being ashamed to just ask for help. We're not just a shelter. We're not just a place for you to come and stay and get off the street. Um, it's not just a bed and a mat. It's a group of people in so many different departments working to not just get you off the street, but also to change your life. Ever since, my life has been better. You know, uh, they really, really helped me out a lot with my laundry, with my food, with work. And if you're serious about your life and you want to get back on the right track, Harbor Light will help you get there. They saved my life. Cause that's how I felt, because if I stayed in the streets in Vancouver, who knows what would happen to me? Let's be honest. A special thanks to the staff here at Anchor of Hope. Today we're bringing you stories of change and fresh beginnings from the special people and services that are giving back to this often forgotten community. Feeling forgotten is a sentiment expressed by many down here. Whether it be drug abuse or homelessness, finding a new life can be daunting. But up next, reporter Maria Arias Rozo introduces us to some brave residents who are starting life all over again. Harbor Light here in Vancouver's downtown east side is a shelter which aids the homeless, people addicted to drugs, and people who have spent part of their life in prison. But only about 5% of people who enter the shelter will successfully move on to rebuild their lives. But with enough initiative and motivation, success may just be reached. During my visit at Harbor Light, I met with Brent, one of the residents of the shelter. And he shared with me his painful life story, including how his addiction first began. For me, it started in my teenage years started out with drinking and uh, ended up uh, running into some tragic uh, tragedy with my mom having a car accident at an early age. And that just threw me for a loop. Ended up going to prison for a while. Once I was in prison at a young age, pretty much got indoctrinated into the drug culture. After 25 years of living in a vicious cycle, Brent entered horrible light in which he has gone through the three phases it offers, which range from projects from sharing his life story designed to reflect on the past, to receiving help in integrating back into the community and setting up housing. I've been able to you know, look back at my life and, and see the damage I've caused, and, and, uh, and, and I want to start to give back. I want to start to feel good about myself. You've gone through this incredible journey throughout your life, and if you could sum it up 
in one final message, what would it be? If I could suggest you know, one thing majorly, that would be don't run away from your problems. Talk to people about how you feel. It's the main message I can give out. Uh, otherwise, uh, it just nothing gets fixed. I also met with Noel. Before he attended Harbour Light, he met Claudia on the streets. They both went through detox and now live together in their beautiful Burnaby home. Tell us a little bit about how is it that you began your, your drug usage? Oh, well, I grew up in a family of uh, 17. Basically, it's a, a single mother. My father was an alcoholic, mother alcoholic. I remember as a child, to get a child to sleep and not bother you, you give them about an ounce of alcohol with sweet water. And if they wake up, have some more ready. And that's of abuse. You, you, psychological abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, and in the abuse. By the age of nearly 40, Noel began detox treatment, in which he met a counselor who helped him immensely through the process. Although she has sadly passed away since, her memory remains in his heart. If your counselor was here, what would you say to her? I would say, <laughs> it's hard to say because she put, her, she put her, her job on the line. You know, thank you for being so strict to me. And, you know, seeing that I, I wasn't a day, I, I, you know. And she said she was like that, man, for, only for a couple of days. And they, she really went screaming at uh, the head boss and basically she saved my butt. Bye bye, Jeannie. <laughs> For Local Connection, I'm Maria Arias Rosa. Thanks very much, Maria. Well, that brings us to an end of our show here at the Salvation Army's Harbor Light Center and Anchor of Hope. We hope this past half hour has given you a better understanding of life down here and how hope is within reach. We welcome your feedback. Please visit us on Facebook or find us on YouTube. For Local Connection, I'm Marnie Maines. And I'm Clayton Timko. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. We know a place that